I'll keep it short today, uh, but uh, really important day for us. Kind of an inter inter squad feel um, to what we'll do today. Simulating a you know not total simulation of a game, but uh, we'll have you know NFL officials here today. Uh, Adrian Hill and his crew um, will uh, try to simulate the clock as much as we can, substitutions, uh, but really designed for reps. Uh, if you see our guys walking off the field today, uh, they more likely will be uh, hopefully pretty exhausted um, from what we'll attempt to do today. It's been a big part of how we do training camp, especially with years with only one joint practice. So I'm excited for today. Uh, a lot of different roster moves and things like that, but I'll let you guys get to it. Yeah, we're uh, you know we'll be sitting some guys. Uh, we haven't determined exactly who, exactly playing time, you know, quarters or halves or things like that. Uh, we've got a lot of you know things to really let work uh, work itself out via the competition, and the game will still be. Uh, a part of the evaluation process that goes with all the practices, the joint work, and the two preseason games we've had so far. I will tell you guys that Jaron Hall will start the game, um, and Matt Corral will, will uh, likely play as well. So um, from the quarterback position, we've got that uh, kind of ironed out. Um, but as far as the rest of the roster, there's a lot of moving parts there. Yeah, I think he's had a good camp. I would just say, you know, with Ed, um, just continued urgency and, and my excitement of seeing that urgency uh, every single snap. And what's my job? What's my technique? What? How am I working in combination with Garrett and Brian on my left and my right? Um, but Ed's doing a, a really nice job, and it's just consistency. Uh, he's more than, uh, he, you know, with all the reps and the time uh, that he's had out there, he's experienced now. He's in his third year. Um, and you know, just holding him to that standard of, uh, of of what we want across that entire offensive line, and I think Ed's up for it. We've wanted to get him a little bit more work, um, especially you know you think back, he you know took a lot of reps in the joint practices, and and then still gave us some good work in the game. Um, so individualized plan for Ed, just like a, you know all 90 guys, 91 guys on our roster, um, and uh, that will continue. Uh, as far as you know, today will be significant. So we'll see from a rep standpoint. So we'll see kind of what his rep count looks like from today, and then apply that in our decision on on uh, you know how much or if if at all Ed will play Saturday. Yeah, I, I think I'm kind of like you guys. Probably it looks like uh, you know if there was defenders over there, he'd probably be um, you know getting open and catching the ball and and but. With an injury, with an injury like TJ's and, and his importance to our organization, uh, I'll continue to defer. Um, thank goodness to the med medical staff on, you know, where guys are at, and I, I trust Tyler and his staff. I know they've done an unbelievable job with him. I, you know, I've credited TJ before, um, but I don't think it could be minimized just from the time, start of the offseason program all the way through today. Uh, the impact he's had in meetings uh, with those other tight ends. He's in every single meeting. Uh, he is. He has a voice in that room. He's in our offensive installs um, as if he's going to be participating in everything. So um, mentally, I love where he's at. And physically, by the looks of it that I see, uh, like you guys probably, uh, we like where he's at there. Now it's just a matter of uh, what folks a lot smarter than me determine as far as what that timeline is from a responsible standpoint, but also knowing we want to get them out there as soon as we can uh, get them out there. It's a huge part of our team. Yeah, and, and oh, you know, absolutely. Um, we've had kind of a plan in place, and there's different, you know, I, I don't want to, we could probably go 15, 20 minutes on just the roster mechanics of uh, kind of how it works based upon um, where guys are at medically and things like that. So, uh, you know, we have a, a plan in place that, you know, hopefully falls in line with the timeline of getting him back during the season uh, with where we want him to be at. Very, yeah, we, we wanted to give Najee, you know, every possible chance uh, to get himself to a place where we felt like he could go out there and, and do what he does, you know, specifically in the kicking game phase and, and as a gunner. Um, he did everything we asked of him, and as we were kind of leading into hopefully seeing him 
uh, this weekend, you know, just dealt with some discomfort and swelling and things like that. So, you know, a lot of dialogue with Najee. He's a very smart, smart player, and I've enjoyed the heck out of, uh, you know, building a relationship with him. Um, but at the big picture of his career, like, let's get this thing fixed and, and get you back on the, the right path. And, and uh, you know, Najee's got a lot of fans in this building, and we just got to get him, you know, in a place where the last thing I ever want to do is, you know, try to push a player to get out there and, and uh, you know, it's not the right time. So uh, in regards to Najee, he's going to get healthy and, and have a lot of football left in front of him. Think Say that one more time. Uh, it, it, it's all, I, I, he's, it's not a, a for sure thing, uh, getting, I should have said, just get healthy. Uh, I'm not uh, qualified to make that decision, whether it'll be surgical or not, or um, I just know we want him to get healthy and, and he will, and he'll be, he'll be uh, in a good spot moving forward. Yeah, those guys are, you know, kind of working through, uh, you know, at different stages, totally different. Um, circumstances, uh, but both both guys that we you know brought here for a reason and, and feel good about the depth of our O line, which hasn't necessarily materialized in practice throughout training camp. But uh, those guys are doing everything they can to to get back out there and uh, very much a you know part of you know our plans. It's just a matter of you know availability and uh, getting them reps with the group. You guys know I'm always good for some Johnny Munt talk. Um, yeah, I just, uh, every time you look up, he's making a play. Um, sometimes noteworthy in the passing game. Sometimes it's just a great block. Sometimes it's the way Josh Oliver and him are working together, Nick Muse, uh, the rest of our tight ends. You know, he's just got such a good feel, poise. Um, he always seems to just be in the right spots, doing the right thing with great technique. And those players tend to be, favorites of coaches. So uh, Johnny's been great. There's a reason why he's been here really every day since I've gotten here. I just, I love the activeness. I mean, it seems like he is, it's kind of controlled chaos sometimes when Levi's doing his thing. I don't know if it's the, it's, it's the hair or what it is, but it just feels to me like um, he's doing a lot of really good things, and he's provided some, you know, energy and juice to that room in different phases. Uh, and I think he's elevated the whole room just from a standpoint of just that active nature at which he plays the game. It's sideline to sideline. He's um, capable of playing and stacking a lot of snaps in a row despite playing like that, which is pretty rare. Um, but no, Levi, you know, is a guy we're we're really excited about. He's had a really good camp. Yeah, it's been really cool to watch just because uh, there's some nuances to some of the things that have kind of developed here uh, that, that maybe we you know, didn't have in previous versions of this offense or where we've kind of gotten to over the years of understanding how he's played uh, that are different for a quarterback. It's not just uh, you know when the huddle breaks, you know exactly what's going to happen. There's some moving parts that uh, what make them you know, great for our offense as they evolve, as the as the play evolves. And Justin's got the uh, mental makeup and the ability to play fast while still um, working through some of the aspects of the play. But there's still a quarterback that's got to get you the ball and the rhythm and timing of that and how it all works together, how the protection matches that. And uh, Justin's been really, really good with all of our quarterbacks, just the dialogue, healthy dialogue on the practice field and the meeting rooms. Um, that's really been a, a huge a step in in really the direction I expected Justin to take uh, through this training camp, and and I think it's going to be something that will go on um, as we go through the season as well. Well, I think just you know him and I spend a lot of time talking through. You'll see me, you know, there'll be some things that I'll be talking through with him, even you know pretty high level things pre practice that might. Uh, materialize might not, but it's just constantly having, you know, my dialogue with him because um, I'm also having the similar dialogue with the quarterbacks, but then challenging him to, you know, let let Sam know, uh, you know, hey, that was perfectly thrown. That was exactly what I was thinking 
or if it's a, you know, hey, uh, you know, I might take that angle a little higher coming out of this break, or I might, you know, I didn't get all my depth on that route, so just expect uh, for, for maybe to be another half click or all these little detail things that you can't really put in a playbook. You can't really, uh, you know, they really have to be practiced and, and mastered for it to come to life. And then you've got his experience of what we've built. He's been a major, major driving force behind that. And um, it's, it's one of the fun parts of the offensive gig for me is, is kind of continuing to evolve that because we know the defenses will continue to evolve because he's beaten a lot of the things that have been put in place to try to take him away. Last two. Yeah, I think um, you know, there's no question uh, that there's there there. It has been eventful in many cases, um, some tough circumstances, and uh, I've told you guys before, but. Uh, my number one role as far as how I see my role for this organization is to be a constant rock of steadiness and being the same guy every day. And anybody can do that when, when things are good and things are easy or you're not experiencing adversity. Um, I believe leadership is showing those things that you say you're about um, authentically and real. That doesn't mean you don't go through the same things right alongside your players and coaches, but um, you've got to do it in a way that uh, provides a path always moving forward and and constantly chasing what we're trying to chase around here and you know I learned a long time ago that uh, you know there's no sense feeling sorry for yourself for your circumstances uh, there is a place to be there for your team on a 24 7 365 day basis uh, but never uh, without projecting hope uh, and genuine um, excitement because that's how I feel about this organization and our players and coaches Last one. I absolutely have, and as I feel a raindrop coming down right now, I'm hopeful that it doesn't uh, turn into an absolute downpour out here. But uh, I always, uh, that's never going to change. Um, I wouldn't feel comfortable standing before you guys, but more importantly, our team, if that wasn't uh, the case.